all that. Okay. Hi there. This is Dr. Martha McLeod, president of his Nantuck Community College, welcoming you to our program, Community Connections. I have a special guest with me today, Dr. Jeff Schumann. And before you can even ask, who is Dr. Jeff Schumann? He's the superintendent of the Enfield Public Schools. He served as deputy superintendent in Newington for six years prior to coming here. He began his career as a middle school principal. Boy, you get extra points for that. Uh, previously, he taught science and physical education in Wethersfield for 17 years, and he's an adjunct professor of educational leadership at the University of Hartford and on numerous statewide committees. And boy, we could start listing those, but I know there are lots and lots. He was awarded the NEAG School of Education Outstanding School Administrator Award in 2010, and now we're lucky enough to have him in Enfield. Welcome, Dr. Schumann. Thank you, Dr. McLeod. It's a pleasure to be here today. And today, we get to pick Jeff's brain. We're going to find out what his vision and top priorities are for the Enfield Public Schools, how he's going to reach out to business and industry, most important to us, how is he going to work with his Nantuck Community College, because we are here to work with him. Welcome, Jeff. What is your vision and what is your top priority for the Enfield Public Schools? Well, Martha, our vision is, is very simple, but it's powerful. We believe that all children can learn at high levels and develop the skills they need to be college and career ready when they leave the Enfield Public Schools. I think that's critical. We have a huge gap right now, a skill gap. We have lots of jobs, but we do not have students with the skills to do them. So they come out of high school, and some of them come out of colleges without that skill set. So what you're saying is really important. How are you going to do that? Well, one of the things we hope to be able to do is to align our curriculum and instruction to new Common Core st standards. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a different way of teaching and a different skill set that students will be exposed to and a different way of assessing those skills so that we're sure that all students are making adequate progress throughout each year of their academic career. In other words, they will read, write, and do math at the high school graduate level when they finish high school. Exactly. We hope to have them doing algebra as they enter high school. Excellent. Very, very important. And the other piece that's going to help us do that is this high school consolidation project, an initiative you've probably heard about going on here in, this, in the town. I did, and that's kind of amazing. You are going to combine Enfield High School and Fermi High School. Absolutely. The time has come, and, you know, it's a really smart fiscal and educational investment for the community. Uh, we're in a position right now where the town of Enfield can receive 70, over 70 percent of the funding from the state. So the town only has to uh, appropriate 30 percent of the funding, and, and that opportunity is not going to come along in the f near future. Probably. One more time. The state will pay 70 percent of the consolidation cost, and the town only has to pay 30 percent. Hard to believe, but that's absolutely correct. Does that sound like a deal? That's a bargain, you know, and that is an incredible bargain, especially when you figure these buildings are aging. And both of them need considerable repair. I didn't realize that. I thought uh, Fermi, and a lot of people think of Fermi as the new school. How old is that high school? Fermi was built in the early 70s. And really? And Field High in the early 60s. And the problem they have is that Fermi High, when it was built in 70, was built to code, but it's no longer up to code. Ah. And we've already had the Office of Civil Rights come through and do an inspection, and they've made uh, a, a laundry list of things that we'll need to fix. Uh, if, uh, the what kind of things do you need to fix? Well, things like uh, the pitch on ramps, the, um, the height of um, handrails on stairs. Every single doorknob in the building would have to be replaced to make it ADA compliant. Ah, yes. Widths, uh, passage widths through hallways have got to be widened. These are things that are almost impossible due to an old building and quite expensive if we were to try to, to repair Fermi High School. I actually understand that because we are trying to repair as an Untuck Community College, which is in an old building, used to be Kosciusko Junior High. Mm -hmm. And meeting those ADA standards and tackling what has to be done to make a school compliant is in a really, really expensive proposition. Certainly. And over at Enfield High School, we have our accreditation board, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, and they are looking at that facility and saying it really doesn't meet their standards for what a 21st century high school should be uh, for them to accreditate us and, uh, and allow our students to graduate from an accredited high school, which is something we want to make sure we never lose. Now, that. I hate to say this, but 
faculty seems to be a lot more important than facility as far as a 21st century high school goes. You know, faculty is the heart of any institution, but what about the building could make them say it just won't work? Other than the fact that it's not ADA compliant, but then again, um, we, we've just managed to be ADA compliant right. here at Isnanta. It would be things like um, the uh, availability of um, equipment in our science labs. Uh, it would be things like um, the, um, the computer labs. It would be the family consumers lab, the world language facilities, um, and really the, the facilities for arts and uh, industrial technology aren't up to standard as well. Mm. So the new building has got a brand new wing. It's going to be called the STEAM Wing with all new science, engineering, arts, mathematics, computer classrooms, uh, industrial arts classrooms, and all those new, new facilities will be in the new wing of the building. Excellent. Uh, as you know, we have manufacturing technologies here at Isnantuck. We have millions of dollars worth of equipment, which we're constantly updating because industry is moving just ahead just as fast. And what we were teaching, say, five years ago, um, was rapid prototyping. Now, many companies are moving to additive manufacturing, which is, in essence, rapid prototyping accelerated. It means we need new equipment. It means students here need to be introduced to all of these new concepts because business and industry changes rapidly, and we, as part of the education system, really have to prepare students for the idea that learning is lifelong. It is never over. You are constantly trying to improve and learn, and science moves ahead. Absolutely, and, and our goal would be to expose our students to the types of technologies that would prepare them to come to a place like his Nuntuck and continue their studies. And with the new facilities, we think we're going to be able to do that. You know, with, and also the the um, the whole movement towards STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We certainly need to start that work earlier with our students, expose them to those types of studies so that they can make good decisions about where they want to go and the types of careers they want to get into uh, as they're leaving high school. And knowing what they are really counts. We work with the Department of Labor very closely to find out where the jobs are, what we should have as part of our curriculum, how students can prepare for the skills. I mean, there's a great deal of difference between spot welding and electron beam welding from $17 an hour to $100,000 a year. Just wow. mi mild differences like that. But the point is, we as educational institutions take the student who has the basic skills on the high school level, your graduates, and most of our students are your graduates, whether they are recent graduates or they graduated years ago. It amazes me how many people keep coming back to Esnanta. And that's because they got a really good education in the Enfield Public Schools. And we're hoping with the consolidation of the high school to build a, a facility that students will want to come to, the adults will want to come to. It'll be uh, educationally sound. It'll be uh, a friendly place where people can come. And for that matter, the whole community will be able to have programs and things there. We just think that this is the time uh, to take advantage of this opportunity, and we're just certainly hopeful that uh, the community is ready to embrace consolidating from two high schools to one in the fall. It's, it's, it's going to happen that soon. Well, the referendum is up for um, the November election, and if uh, it goes through, then we, we get going on it. It'll probably be about a three- to four-year process before we get everyone housed over there and, and graduate our first class out of, uh, out of one single high school in town. Wow. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, planned several activities to learn from the Enfield community. Yes. What kind of things are you trying to learn about Enfield? Well, I, I really want to learn about their priorities, you know, what they want from their school system, uh, specifically what they want for their children, um, and what they want from their facilities, and, and what they'd like our teachers to be able to provide for their students. So we've set up a series of what we're calling Listen and Learn activities. And we're going to go out and we're going to spend uh, some evenings in the schools, and we're going to invite uh, parents and community members to come and just speak with us and tell us uh, what they want to tell us and, and, let us, and share with us what their concerns and their priorities are. We're going to do the same thing with the faculty, and we're going to do the same thing with the students. As a matter of fact, this Friday we're going over to Fermi High School, and we're meeting with the 10th, 11th, and 12th graders in separate assemblies, and we'll go back a little later on and meet with the freshmen. Excellent.